I'm with Joe Blazy, who is the Global Data Governance Officer for Commvault. Now, Joe, you look after the GDPR programme for them there. Are you bored of hearing that word yet? <laughs> no, I haven't got GDPR fatigue quite yet, but it's definitely been a busy um, 12 months in um, getting the business um, GDPR programme um, more mature mm -hmm. um, and working really with teams across the business to um, get ourselves into a good uh, position for GDPR compliance. Now we're hearing uh, that word a lot, maturity, it's sort of no longer just about compliance, it's about actually being better and, and being good. So what has that meant for you over the last 12 months? Well, I joined Commvault about um, 12 months ago, just four days before GDPR came into um, force. Uh, so for me, it's been uh, very much getting to know the business, understanding what data we have uh, and where that is. I was lucky that I wasn't starting um, from scratch, but I think uh, you mentioned GDPR fatigue. I think it's common for businesses to have looked at May the 25th as that line in the sand to get over and now it's that continuing message of we've got to keep going and um, it's not just a one time that we've got to be ready. And how have you been able to do that? Have you got that buy-in? I've been lucky that I have a GDPR virtual team, so people within each of the functions um, in the business have been lucky or unlucky enough to have <laughs> the role to um, help me. So that's helped me get a good view of what the different lines do and what um, personal data they are processing and a good, well, as I say, a good contact in, in each of the teams. And I, I think you need that and you need to put the effort in um, manually as a human as well as relying on um, maybe some privacy technology to help you on the way as well. And have you found sort of getting that buy-in from those people and I assume their wider teams, has that been easy to do? It, it has been. I, I've found most people are quite engaged on the um, topic uh, and want to help but I'm always very conscious that people are maybe, it's part of their uh, role, not their whole role. And I think one of the things in being responsible for a program is you need to be quite diplomatic and remember that what you're asking is one of many things that they're going to be asked for in the day. Uh, and you just need to keep going and build up those relationships so people feel able to come to you if they have got a question or at least know that you're there willing to help. And have you had sort of common questions thrown at you over the past year? Quite a few common questions on marketing front. I think we all saw so much um, just before May the 25th, everyone was getting those emails into their inboxes. Yeah. Did you need consent for marketing? Was this okay? Was that okay? So uh, yes, quite a lot from the marketing team that it was a good sign for me as I was uh, new into the business. They were uh, aware of GDPR and e privacy regulation and, and wanting to make sure that um, what they were doing were, was in a good place to, to meet those requirements. And as you look ahead to the coming 12 months, what sort of new challenges do you think you're going to come up against? It, it's really, as I alluded to earlier, it's that keep going that it um, and to try and keep the energy in the business to want to do it and also it's a global role I have so I'm very much aware that there's other laws coming into um, force and effect that I need to be bearing in mind as well as GDPR and really thinking um, if you're running a global program how you do that in the most efficient way that meets those requirements without completely fatiguing the business by asking them lots and lots of different compliance questions from all different um, laws. So I'm looking at ways of doing that as efficiently as possible. Now we're hearing a lot about that, the, the new laws coming up in different countries, some going a bit further than GDPR, some just a little bit different or tightening definitions. Is there anything that you're particularly focused on? No, I'm trying to stick to what I see as the basics, you know, what data have we got, why have we got it, how long have we had it, um, and I think if you can get a good picture of your actual data management life cycle, that goes a long way to help you 
meet any legislation. If you don't know what that is, you, you're never going to be able to comply with, with, with any of it. I think that's a really good tip, sort of start with the basic fundamental principles. Yes. <laughs> and have you seen any differences between the countries in which you operate in? Are any particularly bought in or others, you know, less interested? No, I'm keeping kind of watching eye on what's happening in California. I had some of uh, colleagues in Brazil have reached out to say, look, we've got um, something that is a bit similar to, to GDPR. Um, Australia, I mean all sorts of questions are coming in um, but my focus has been to try and kind of smooth it out and have a really good global program that um, isn't quite one size fits all but as much as it can be to, to, to be that. Well it sounds like you're doing a, a good job at it, is it uh, enjoyable or is it keeping you up at night? Um, it certainly keeps me on my toes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's maybe not a bad place to be. <laughs> All right, well, that's great. Thank you so much for sharing those insights with us. Thank you very much. Thank you.